These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. Many people, of course, completely reject the analysis just given there, reprised there, uh, from George W. Bush. One of those is Michael Berger. He's the spokesman and documentary maker for 911truth.org. He has made a film called Improbable Collapse, The Demolition of Our Republic, which reviews the evidence for the World Trade Center demolitions from a scientific perspective. The film attacks the official story that three World Trade Center buildings collapse from fire and damage alone, using the government's own reports and the research of BYU physics professor Stephen Jones, former UL employee Kevin Ryan, and Jim Hoffman. The mechanism of the building collapses proposed by the U.S. government investigations, they say is extremely unlikely, hence the title of the film. We should hear from this man. Michael Berger joins us now. Michael, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, George. Now tell me, just, uh, I know you can't in a nutshell because it's, uh, it's, it would be too big a nutshell, but what are your main, <laughs> what are your main critiques of the official story? Well, basically, uh, 911truth.org doesn't have a position on who is responsible for the attacks. Our position is that there are so many unanswered questions uh, and contradictions on the official record from the government, from the 9-11 Commission report, that we really do not know the full facts of who was responsible for these attacks and how they were carried out. And that was the mission of the 9-11 Commission. It was to give a complete um, understanding of how this happened so it could never happen again. So the issue, uh, there are so many. The question is, where do you want to begin? Um, all of the points that I will raise are facts-based. They're not theories. They're not conjecture. Uh, facts that were either raised by mainstream media or researchers. But the issue is that the mainstream media has never connected all the dots and put the story in a context to frame it in a way that the average American would find the story they were told questionable. Okay, go on. Give me your five best ones. Well, uh, for example, uh, most people don't know that the indestructible black boxes, for example, each plane has two black boxes. Uh, in the 9-11 Commission report, in a footnote, the two black boxes from each of the planes that hit the towers in New York, uh, the Commission claims they were never recovered. In a book published one year prior to the Commission report, a New York City firefighter uh, stated in this book that he was assigned by his chief to take federal agents around the site with the equipment to recover the black boxes. They recovered three of the four black boxes. Uh, subsequently, an independent journalist had a source at the FAA who told him anonymously that he examined those black boxes that were recovered and that the FBI subsequently took them from uh, the NTSB. So if that, that's there a, is nothing that, to hide, that, that's a powerful, why, that's, why would there be a cover-up, for example, of what was on those black boxes? Uh, that's a very powerful point. Give me your second. Um, give me your second best one. I give you not. I mean, I just want to bring up a point you made earlier. Uh, we have this assumption that Bin Laden was responsible for the attack. Well, he said he if was. You go to the, he said he was. I, I understand. I understand. But if you go to the FBI website and look at the most wanted poster for Bin Laden, it does not name the crimes of 9/11. And an investigative journalist called the FBI and asked them why that was, and they stated that they have no hard evidence linking bin laden to the attacks of 9 11. Mm. beyond, so the, beyond the fact beyond the fact that he confessed on television well actually uh, the source of that tape is of uncertain origin if you recall military forces claim to have found it in afghanistan yeah but i know My question I, is, I, I know what bin laden looks like i know what he sounds like and i know the kind of things that he says and trust me that was bin laden well uh, whether or not it was bin laden the issue is then why hasn't the FBI found any hard evidence linking him to the crime. Well, I don't think he was involved in the crime itself. I think that people motivated by his world view carried it out. I don't think he was sitting in a cave in the Tora Bora planning it all. 
All right. Well, you know that he also actually denied responsibility for the attacks on the morning of 9-11. He that did, but he did. That he, he did, but he, he later uh, said that he had done it and that his brothers had done it, that they had knocked down the towers and he gave the reasons why. Uh, I, I, again, that confession video has been of questionable origin and authenticity. There have been a lot of experts who have studied it. Uh, I, again, this is, a, this is a minor point. Um, how did the hijackers, the alleged hijackers, get into the United States? <coughs> if, you, if you do a search on their visa applications, um, for example, which are now in the public domain, you can see them for yourself, the family members raise these questions to 9-11 commissioners. All of their applications, without exception, are incomplete and lacking detailed information. And if you've ever known anybody who's tried to get a visa to come to the United States, it's a long, drawn-out, difficult process. Not for Saudi Arabians. Not for Saudi Arabians. Fourteen of them were Saudi Arabians. Saudi Arabians have no, uh, no difficulty, they, had no difficulty that, getting visas to the United that's States. That's because they came through the Jeddah Consulate. The majority of, uh, of those hijackers in the Jeddah Consulate was known for bringing uh, covert operatives into the United States for training, which is, for example, might be a possible explanation for why five of the hijackers had Florida driver's licenses with a military base as the address on their driver's license. They trained in military bases in the United States before the attacks. I mean, these are questions that the commission should have looked into and answered. Uh, for example, why didn't anybody follow the money trail? On the morning of 9-11, we had uh, the head of the Pakistan ISI, General Mahmoud Ahmed, in meetings in Washington the days before and on the morning of 9-11, he was meeting with the head of the House and Senate uh, Intelligence Committees. And after 9-11, a story came out, which the FBI subsequently confirmed, that he had ordered a wire transfer of $100,000 to the lead hijacker, Mohammed Atta. And yet, uh, none of those trails were followed by the 9-11 Commission. No, I, fact, I, 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 we have common ground that the 9-11 Commission is a woefully inadequate instrument. Its report leaves as many questions uh, as it uh, does answers. I'm, I'm with you on that. But I want to move you on, if I may, to what sure. is the $64,000 question, as we used to uh, uh, call it. 